Hey folks, this is Soapbox here. Today we will be taking a look at the NC6 Gossaw and learning how to turn this weapon into the killing beast it's famed to be. To buy the Gossaw, it's going to cost you absolutely nothing. The Gossaw is a default LMG given to the NC Heavy Assault class. This weapon is famed for its high damage. Each round will deal 200 damage out of 10 meters and drop off to 167 damage out of 85 meters. This is an extremely low drop off as it decreases by only 33 damage. Assuming all shots land the body, there will be a 5 shot kill up to 10 meters and a 6 shot kill out past that 85 meter mark. This is assuming that the target does not have nano weave armor on. The real kicker here is that the Gauss Saw has a 2 times headshot multiplier. If you factor headshots in, there's a 3 shot kill no matter what range you're shooting at. If your target is a heavy assault and Nanai Mesh Generator Shield is activated, it will take just under 4.5 shots to kill him within 10 meters or 5 shots out past that 85 meter mark. This is assuming all shots land on the head. This is a insane amount of damage, especially when you're landing headshots. We will refer back to this model later, so just keep it in the back of your mind. When it comes to accuracy, the Gauss Saw has an extremely high vertical recoil. This is probably the biggest downside to the weapon, as it limits the range at which you can effectively land shots. The best way to compensate for this is by pulling down a stand on your target. Surprisingly though, it has a very low first shot multiplier, making burst firing a very viable option on this weapon. The Gauss Saw also has a recoil that jitters randomly right or left. While this is not a big deal, it is a problem because you cannot compensate for it. So, you simply must deal with it and make the most of whatever happens. It has a .07 bloom per shot, which ties it with the Raxim version of the Gauss Saw for the highest bloom per shot of any LMG. Along the lines of accuracy, the Gauss Saw possesses only a middle of the line bullet velocity. This means that this weapon does suffer from quite a bit of bullet drop when shooting beyond its intended range. Also, this should be kept in consideration while hitting moving targets, as the bullets will move slightly slower than you're probably used to with any other LMG. The Gauss Saw has 100 rounds in the clip and 300 rounds in reserve, for a grand total of 400 rounds. This is a huge amount of ammo, and you should not find yourself running out. It has a rate of fire of 500 rounds per minute. This means it'll take 12 seconds to empty the clip with continuous fire, and you will be releasing around 8.3 rounds per second. Now if we go back to our rounds to kill, we find that if all shots land in the head, it takes just under 2 fifths of a second to kill someone, no matter what range you're shooting at. This is where we see the insane killing power of the Gauss Saw come into play. If all shots land on the body, then it still only takes 2 thirds of a second to kill your target. The Gauss Saw reloads at 6.5 seconds short, and 7.5 seconds long. This is the longest reload of all the LMGs other than the Raxium LMG version for the NC. This is a considerable downside to the weapon. Being defenseless for over 6 seconds is quite dangerous and requires you to be in safe place when reloading this weapon. As far as attachments go, the Gauss Saw has access to scopes 1x through 6x as well as night vision optics. I personally would recommend a 2x reflex sight. While the 3.4x or the 4x are a decent option, the shake and recoil makes them a little too unmanageable. I personally find that I can be more accurate with the 2x than I can be with the 3.4x scope. Now the scope update will be coming out soon, so the accuracy and shake while using the 3.4 and the 4x scope is bound to change. Just make sure you keep this in mind while purchasing a scope. A note here is that the 1x or 2x scopes only cost 5 certs as it is a default LMG for the Heavy Assault class. As far as rail attachments go, the Gauss Saw has access to a laser sight, dark flashlight, and advanced forward grip. We can toss out the dark flashlight without even thinking about it, as it is completely pointless on a weapon like this. The laser sight is an option, but it tries to strengthen a weapon in an area where it's not really viable. The best, and in my eyes only rail attachment, is the advanced forward grip. This will reduce the vertical recoil of the weapon, which is extremely helpful. If you purchase the advanced forward grip, it will cost you 200 certs. In a barrel slot, you can equip a compensator or a suppressor. Again, I would not recommend the suppressor, as it is not useful in the ranges you will be fighting at. 
and the decreased bullet velocity is a big deal for a mid-range weapon that has an already somewhat slow bullet velocity. The compensator would be my attachment of choice. It further reduces the vertical recoil, but it does make the player show up farther away and decreases accuracy when firing from the hip. Both the compensator and the suppressor will cost you 100 certs. The last slot is the ammo slot. Here you only have one option, which is high velocity ammo. High velocity ammo will increase bullet speed and damage at range, but will also increase the vertical recoil. Personally, my pins on this are mixed. The increased bullet velocity is great for hitting moving targets, and the extended damage is helpful also. On the other hand though, the vertical recoil is quite hurtful, and this weapon is already so powerful that it does not need to have its max damage extended. Personally, I would not run high velocity ammo, but the choice is up to you. If you are undecided, then I would run nothing. This gives you no downside. And if you find you have trouble dealing damage at range, and you can control the recoil, then you can run high velocity ammo. Now that we are over all the nitty gritty stats, we can go over how to get the most out of this weapon. I'm going to start by going over my recommended loadout. I run a 2x reflex sight, advanced foregrip, and a compensator. This will decrease the vertical recoil as much as possible and makes this weapon much easier to handle. If you purchase everything for this loadout, it will cost you only a 305 certs. This is an extremely low amount of certs to complete this weapon. Most weapons will come in at around 430 certs to complete, without factoring the certs to buy the weapon, which could be as high as 1000 certs. The biggest thing with using the gauss saw is to fight at ranges that are ideal for this weapon. This means fighting between the 30 to 100 meter mark. If you engage targets before that 30 meter mark, you are likely to get outgunned by SMGs and carbines. While if you fight beyond the 100 meter mark, you can no longer maintain accuracy for landing consistent shots. This is where you will make the weapon succeed or fail. Fighting at the ideal range took me quite a while to learn and is essential to this weapon. Stay away from head to head engagements whenever possible. This weapon is great, but slow rate of fire does not make it conducive to facing off against someone. Saying that an ideal weapon range will help eliminate these problems. I personally don't think I'll be using this weapon much after this review, due to the fact that my game style compels me to get close with the enemies, and this often gets me killed while using the Gauss Saw. As we discussed earlier, the Gauss Saw has a 2x headshot multiplier. This means that whenever possible, you should go for headshot. This will greatly decrease your time to kill, and allow you to quickly take out multiple targets. The last thing I want to touch on is reloading. When you reload, you are committing to at least 6 and a half seconds of downtime. First off, I would recommend waiting to reload until you have around 30 to 50 rounds left, depending on how many you are planning to use. The best option is to get behind friendly lines and reload. If you cannot get into a safe place, then I would recommend getting out of the main line of fire and crouching down. As you are reloading, be ready to switch to your pistol if someone comes up on you. Well folks, that's it for the review. I hope you've learned how to use the God Saw to its full ability and to make the most out of this weapon. If you have learned something today or have your own strategies for using the God Saw, let me know in the comment section below. If this video was helpful or enjoyable, then feel free to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this or want to support the channel, then click that subscribe button. This is Soapbox, signing off.